Hey, this is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the creditrepairshop.com. You're going to want to pay full attention to this video. I'm going to try to stay as excited as possible. You need to take out your pen and paper to take notes. I'm going to have a special offer for you, for you to work with my company. But first, we need to see who's a good fit to see if you're a good fit to work with us because everybody's situation is different. But first, before we even get started, I want to talk about exactly why I do this business. I love the credit repair business. And it's not because of making money. It's because of helping people, helping people just like you. Now, let's look at the stats right here. Black, over 40% of black people struggle with, with bad credit. That's 16 million people, white people, 19%. 43 million people, Asians, 32%, 5.6 million, Hispanic, 38%, 23 million people, total 87 million people plus and growing every day. We're about to go through a recession. This number is going to be big. And if you're one of them, you need help. You're probably one of them because you're here watching my video I want to help these people because I know how it feels to struggle. I know how it feels to be losing things or have a car repossessed, to not be able to pay the bills, but there's a solution to it. And I want to be the one to help people. And I'm going to have a special offer for you if you are one of the chosen people. Now, you don't have to take my word on it. Here, you can go and do your own research. This stuff is on Bloomberg. It's on NPR. It's on uh, the Boston Globe and other publications that are out there. Now, let's, let's get started. Let's get started. So, what does struggling look like? Because a lot of people, they say, well, I'm, I don't have a problem with having bad credit. I'm going to tell you, you do have a problem having bad credit. And I'm going to point it out to you because awareness is key. When you become aware of a problem, sometimes you can be in the pot boiling and you are just not aware of the problem. I'm about to show you that if you have bad credit, you have a problem and it's stopping you from becoming the best person that you can be. Not to grade yourself against other people. I'm talking about allowing you to live the life you want to live. Now, look at this. People with bad credit, I talk about this a lot in my videos on YouTube, I show it on my website from day one with the credit repair shop, I've always talked about this. People that have bad credit pay high interest rates. That means that you're paying, the, you're paying more for the same things that people pay less for. Think about that. That's like taking your money out of your wallet, you go to, let's just put an example, you go to get a car and this person who has good credit, they're going to pay $200 less per month than you are. And you're going to pay $200 more simply because of a credit score. Is that the life that you want to continue living because you're throwing away your wealth? People with bad credit lose job offers. They lose promotions. One of the ways that they're looking at hiring people now and looking at promoting people, if there's a tie, if it's if everything is equal between two individuals, they are going and looking at the credit report because they're saying, well, if we're going to make a good decision, how is this individual managing their own life? So it's important. Don't let that bypass you. Relationship. I've seen relationships break up over bad credit because they're saying if you cannot manage financing, we're going to end up divorced. And that's what happens. If you look it up, look it up for yourself. Don't just take my word on it. The families break up more because of finances. Yeah, they start doing other types of stuff when they start to struggle with each other over the finances. But if you look at the root, go back and look at the root of why they got divorced. Nine times out of 10, it's going to be for the divorce going to be because of finances, which an end result of having poor finances is bad credit. Next thing is they live in poverty. If you don't do nothing about your credit, you're going to continue a cycle for yourself and your family to stay in poverty. You could be the one 
just like I was for my family. You could be the one, the shining light, to take your family, your a whole generation of your own family and your relatives that you know by uh, just setting an example to say, this is what you need to do. No, they don't all want to follow it. Trust me, I know that for, from my own experience. But if you lead by example, just think of the people, the, the, the little children, your own children, neighbors, uh, family, co-workers, that you could say, hey, this is what I did to get out of my situation. And that's exactly what I've done. And that's why I'm here making this video for you. The next thing is high monthly expenses. We kind of touched up on that with the high interest rates. But if you, I, I can give you an example of, of something. Because I have excellent credit, when I went to get uh, electric turned on in this building here, my office building, they didn't make me put a deposit. But I know of people who had to put deposits to get regular electric to their house. They had to put a deposit down. That's money out of your pocket. Going to get a cell phone and someone said that they had to put a deposit down to be able to get a cell phone. Come on, everybody. Let's get this done so we don't waste our hard-earned money on monthly expenses paying more for the same things that other people pay less for. Next thing is you can't buy a home. Buying a home is like step one in your wealth. If you can get into that house, if you have trouble saving money, but you make that payment year after year, you know, I'm about to sell a home that I've almost been in for 20 years. <coughs> Excuse me. For 20 years, almost been in that home. And I think I'm going to profit out of that home when I sell it almost $360,000. What if I wasn't the type of person that could save money, but I just made that payment? That is like an investment in your future, in your family's future. This is where you start to build wealth. And if you cannot even buy a house, you're building someone else's dreams. You're building someone else's wealth. So you need to think about that. The next thing is security clearances. I had a Secret Service agent who said, and a police officer, several police officers that said they had to get stuff cleared off their credit reports. They had to resolve those collections because they were going to not be able to qualify for security clearance, that they can't have that type of stuff on their reports. When I was in the military, you cannot have stuff that like collections that you owe. They will call your first sergeant and your first sergeant will say, you better pay it or you're going to get what's called an Article 15. Look that up if you don't know what an Article 15 is. Next, confidence. I'm speaking up here confidence. I believe in what I say. I do what I say. I talk to people about this every day. I talk to people who own businesses. I talk to regular, every ordin everyday, ordinary people to tell them that this is real. Everything starts with your credit. And if you have good credit, you're going to have confidence. You're going to have confidence when you walk into a place and you say, I know what my, my scores are. I know that I have good credit and you're going to approve me. It's going to be a back and forth on what interest rate or I might go to another company. The next thing is self-esteem. I hope you see it in me and I want to see it in you. When you have good self-esteem, high level of self-esteem, it's like a glow around you. People believe you. People follow you. And it also, something that I learned with self-esteem, and that's with the plus much, much more, is that ideas and creativity come. See, right now, when you're so worried about things, you can't even be creative. There's so much that you can do with your life if you just take care of this side. Put it aside and be like, this is what I'm going to do from this day forward. I'm going to clean up that credit no matter how long it takes. No matter how long it, it takes because no matter what, time is going to pass. So stop thinking about it's got to get done in this period of time. No matter what, time is going to pass. So let's go and move forward. So let me go here. And this is a very good illustration on what I just was saying here. 
If you look at this, look at this. The time is now. I want to just go back a little bit because I'm real. I, I love history. I, I watch a lot of the history channels, the history shows, and I want to show you something. I want to make you aware of something that you may not even be aware of. Did you know in the 2008 recession that it took to 2014 to, to fully recover? But the, the key word recover, it did recover. But let me show you some things that I found that people were not doing. I said, what did you do during that time when I saw people with bad credit? I was like, what did you do during that time? One of the things that did not recover was that millions of Americans, at that time, more than 40 million Americans ended up having bad credit and they did, did not do any Thing to work on it. Yes, a large number did. A large number resolved their situations, but a lot of people didn't. So what are you going to do during this time? Because we're about to go into another recession. And the time to work on stuff is when it's unsure. See, a lot of people, they got frozen. When they were going through this process, they didn't understand that it's just a cycle, that life is a cycle, that finances is a cycle. And if you don't stay paralyzed. And the first thing that you have to unparalyze yourself with is having bad credit. Like a lot of people focus on making a lot of money and doing these opportunities when you have to have good credit. Trust me. Now, let's move forward. Let's move forward here. During that time, let me tell you what did blow up. Let me tell you what did blow up. During that time, these types of lenders, payday loan, auto title loan, subprime rent to own scams that were out there, high interest credit card, bad credit card approvals. You see them all over the internet right now. Department store cards blew up because they were going after that bad credit uh, uh, group, that, that 40 million group, and it's even bigger now. You just saw that. And then these bad credit auto loans, you see them all over. Bad credit, I even saw it for RVs. I saw it for Whirlpools. Bad credit, okay. I, I think I even saw one for Windows. It was like unbelievable. That blew up because they knew that something about that market was that they would focus on getting things rather than resolving their credit. Because if you resolve your credit, you don't fall victim to this stuff, you resolve your credit, you're not in this category right here. You don't fall into these categories right there. So let's do something about it. Let's move forward. All right, let me give you a little bit of, of my life lessons because I'm here to tell you that I went through it. And because I went through it, I'm able to say, I know how you feel. I know what you got to do. I know that you got to work hard. I know that you have to believe in yourself. And if you choose to work with my company, you need to continue to believe in me because what I've done for myself and my family, I can get that process started with you. Yes, you got to do some work. Yes, you got to believe. Yes, you got to provide information. Yes, you got to follow through. Yes, you got to stay engaged. But if you have that goal in mind, which I'm going to show you in a minute how we can get that done for you, together really, we're going to be together as a team, that we can make things happen for you. But first, let's talk about my lesson. Back in 2000, um, 1994, 1994 for me, my wife and I, Christmas of 1994, we sat down at our kitchen table, credit was tore up, we had all of these bills, kids you know, looking at us arguing and we said, we got to do something about it or we're going to end up like those statistics where you could be divorced. Because what did I say earlier? Finances end up getting people divorced. What did we do? We sat down Christmas, 1994. We made a plan. We said, we're going to stick to it and we're going to get ourselves out of debt and we're going to fix our credit. We didn't even know how to do it, but we said, we're going to do it. Difference is that I know how to do it now, and I tell people this is what you got to do, and we do it for people. So, 
It set me up for what happened with the recession in 2001 because I took care of business here years later when the recession hit in 2001, I was prepared. Not, like other people were struggling and I was like, well, I feel your struggle, but this is what you got to do. And I started helping people for free. I was just, I was telling business associates, uh, their family, they were sending me people. I was like, this is what my wife and I did in 94 and you need to do this so you can get yourself in that situation. I didn't even charge money. But then so many people started <laughs> referring people to me. I was like, I got to make this into a business. And that's what I ended up doing. But aside from the credit repair shop, in my own life, it set me up to buy a home, to buy a vehicle that I wanted. I bought my first car, paid cash for it. Not to say that you got to pay cash, but I had started a way of saving money from having uh, money coming in and not blowing it on all of these different things, managing my finances. That's like one of the key important steps in the credit repair process. And that's part of the work that we tell you to do. And we counsel you on doing that stuff. So 2001 set me up for 2008. So because I was set up for 2001 to prosper, I really prospered when the recession of 2008 hit, what did I do? I did real estate, I bought real estate and flipped real estate, and I also uh, purchased a commercial build, building for one of my businesses that the owner of that biz, uh, building had to sell that build, building because they needed the money. So it set me up for prosperity because what I did back here that set me up for here, set me up for prosperity here. Now, 2008 set me up for prosperity in 2022. Really, it set me up for prosperity from 20, 2008 all the way through to now. So what am I doing? Commercial, real estate, My I own four different companies, and I help people just like you. From what I've done here, is what is going to allow me to make this offer to you. It's going to allow me to make this offer to you and many other people just like you because I put myself in a position to be able to help people. See, one of the things that gets people confused about helping people is that they try to help people when they're not really in the position to help people. And that is, you don't want to put yourself in that situation. You want to help people when you know that regardless of the help that you do, it's not going to hurt you. So let's move forward. So now, it put me in a position to make this offer. I want to talk to you about this offer and it's going to be for the next 30 people who are watching this video. And I'm not going to keep this offer for long because I want to see if people are even interested in it. For the next 30 people who sign up, there's no upfront service fee or activation fee. We usually, we never charge an upfront service fee, but now we're not even gonna charge an activation fee. We wanna let you in the doors. We wanna get the work done, processed, and sent out before you pay us any money. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna start on your work from day one after we do your report review. We're gonna help you do your reports. Don't worry about that stuff. This, what I'm just telling you right now is that when after day one of doing your report review, we're going to get your stuff sent out all the way out. And I'm going to explain to you the different processes that we're going to use on that. The next thing is that you, all we need to do is get your three credit scores and reports, and we will help you do that. The next thing is you're going to get customer service, phone, email, text, live chat and portal. In the credit repair business, one of the things that people complain about is that they have no contacts. You're gonna have so many points of contacts to get in touch with us, and I have a full-time staff. This is not, uh, not to say that having a business in the basement or a garage or a home office is bad, but what I'm saying is that I have full-time employees. When you have full-time employees that are dedicated to customer service, you will get to speak to someone about your concerns. And we also, with our customer service department, 
This is something that I've added because I've noticed from listening to the conversations is that sometimes people need to speak to someone because there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of worry. You need reassurance. So we don't just jump on the phone and just say, well, this is what we see. We want to talk with you to help guide you through that anxiety and that pro it's so through that process, because I understand it's not just about doing paperwork. It's also about listening to people to say, this is what I'm worried about. And can you maybe get a little bit more focus on that? And we're here to hear you fully and to implement. The next thing is 24 7 365 client portal to see how your file is process is, is going through the process. Number one, when your file is processed, you're going to get an email of everything that's being processed. Number two, you'll, you'll be able to log in and you can communicate through that portal and you can also just see how work it, what work is being done and you'll have uh, the ability to see where you're at in the process. Now, just so you understand up front, this is not overnight, no credit sweeps, nothing illegal, and I'm going to show you my process for repairing credit in a moment. So now, I want to make sure that you're a good fit. Let's go through the process. I don't want everyone that is watching this video to just jump and sign up. What I want you to do is I want you to look at what I'm about to show you and I want you to think to yourself, are you a good fit to work with my company? Before we get to that, I want to talk about a natural order. I think that this is important. This is why a lot of people fail. This is why I had actually failed with some things that I did in the past. There is a natural order with everything that we do in life. This is, huge, this is a huge life lesson, and it applies to sports, business, life, credit repair, everything. Let me just break it down for you. There is a natural order, a law. Some people say like a law. Not, I'm not talking about like a law like you're speeding down the street and you're breaking the law. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a law. I'm talking about elements. I'm talking about like if you bake a cake, you have to put the eggs, you have to put the milk if you or some sort of liquid. Like you, you have to mix it, you have to stir it. That is a law. If you don't do that order, that natural order, that law, have those elements, you won't have a cake. If you don't do those elements, you will not have credit repair. They all must be present to get the result, but you don't have to do all of the elements yourself. This is something that uh, I want to, I love giving this example. You don't have to bring all the elements, but they must be present to get the desired result or results. And I like to use this example because my start when I was 15 years old was in real, was, was where I wanted to be a big real estate investor, saw the commercials on TV. And the, the first thing that they said is you can buy real estate with no money down. And the first thing that came to my head was that no money has to be involved in buying real estate with no money down. And I soon learned very quickly that you got to have these elements to buy real estate with no money down. You got to have a house. You got to have an offer. You have to have an accepted offer. You got to get your terms and you got to have money. So if there's no money involved, how do you buy real estate with no money down? This is very key. It's not about your money. It's whose money. But they probably couldn't sell you if they said buy real estate with someone else's money. That's something that people, they do say that on some of them, but even when people say that, the first thing that comes to their mind is they're worried about whose money and how am I going to get someone to invest, especially if I got bad credit. So this is a very good example on understanding the elements and the natural order on getting something done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through our eight point validation process for repairing credit. This is very important. You need to pay attention. And I'm also going to call this 2.0 because I made this video 
years ago where I explained what makes us different. Like when we talk to people on the phone, they always say, well, what makes you different from this company? What makes you different from that company? I'm about to show you in detail exactly what makes us different. So now all credit repair companies, all credit repair companies will do what you see on this side right here. All of them. We're the only company that does this side. So now you're going to need your ID. You're going to need address verification. You're going to need social security. You're going to need, and, and also if they're a good company, they're going to ask you, what are your goals for repairing your credit? The next thing is you're going to need all three credit reports. And most companies are going to also give you uh, some type of portal access. So you'll be able to see what's going on with your reports. The next thing is they're going to dispute your information and they're going to give you results somehow. You know, every company does it different. And then they're going to do uh, redisputes on your information. That's what all of the other companies do. And this is what makes us different. This is what, what makes us different 2.0. And so this is an upgrade of the video that I made more than a, probably about 10 years ago. So when we repair credit, we use what's called an eight point validation process and a two phase settlement process. From my own personal experience and for what we've been able to do for customers, this is really going to be the only way that you're going to get your credit repaired from A to Z. And that's why I always called it. If you're going to get your credit repaired, you want to be with a company that's going to take you all the way from A to Z. And this is what makes us different. So now, what other companies don't do, and this was something that I came up with from my own experience, because I had noticed, I had noticed that a lot of the times the bureaus will disregard a lot of the things that you try to send them in disputes. And the reason why is because the, uh, the uh, furnishers, which I'm going to go into in a second, are the customers of the credit reporting agencies. So I don't want to say it's in their best interest, but I can see why some of the stuff that is disputed is not, it just comes back verified. You know, you can make your own uh, determination on it, but if you just think about it with that order, the furnishers pay the bureaus to be able to put information on the report to show the status negative or positive about an account that you have. So if they're paying them to put it on and you don't pay them to do anything, whose interest is going to, you know, have the most weight? We think it's the furnishers, but that's my own personal opinion. So now we're going to do what's called a full furniture process during the process of dispute. So with what everybody else is doing here, we're also including this. So it's like you're getting more for your money, for what you're paying for the service, because other c companies don't even do this. They might try to do some sort of variation, but this actually increases the cost. And uh, a lot of companies just don't want to do it. And also they don't have the manpower to handle because what I'm about to show you is going to be why this process works a lot faster uh, but it also gets a lot of interaction. And if you don't have a customer service team, it's, it, you know, it's going to be tough for a, a smaller company to be able to, to manage clients. So if you have medical bills, collections, charge off repos, utility bills, cell phone bills, cable bills, student loans, foreclosures, pay, payday loans, evictions, inquiries, and other types of items, you have a right. You, no matter what anyone tells you, no matter what you've seen from TransUnion, Equifax, Experian, from what they've maybe sent you in a letter or what you may have read in a blog or something on their website, you have a right, regardless if an account is negative or positive, to have to make sure that that account is accurate, to make sure that that, that account shows on your credit report fair. So now, let me kind of give you an example of how something could be on your credit report where you did have that account, but it's not showing on there uh, accurately. If you see that the balances are wrong, if you see that the account dates are wrong, you see that the payment history is wrong, 
any of that stuff that's on there, you would be able to challenge the accuracy of that information that's being shown on your credit report. The next thing is fair, having information shown your credit report fairly. We see this a lot with inquiries. We see this a lot with collections and we see this a lot with student loans where they'll, you, you know that you went to a car dealer and you only applied with one finance company, but you have 15 that showed up on your credit reports. You uh, had a collection from an original creditor and then they're showing you with another account with a debt collector and it makes it look like you have two accounts. You only have one account. If the original creditor sold that over to a debt collector, are they in essence saying that they were paid for that account? So at minimum, shouldn't that account show that it was paid and closed? It could say paid for less because they paid it. Remember in my uh, elements that I showed you, the law, the, when, I, when I showed you, uh, you got to have the elements and, the pro, and, and you have to have all of these elements to make something happen. If they show that that was paid, it doesn't have to be paid by you. It could be paid by the debt collector who bought that debt. Another uh, thing that we see is we see student loans on individual individuals reports where they were closed out and then they were uh, had it uh, either um, had new ones placed on there from a new processor that they're working with but it looks like they have double the amount of student loans so this is something that we also look in that and that we challenge if the individual does not have their uh, student loans maybe in deferment another thing is federal statutes and state statutes is different for all 50 states and the federal statutes are, are, are federal for all 50 states but there are cert certain types of accounts that are under that federal statute and that they cannot stay on your credit reports because of that the other thing is uh you have so a lot of people ask us when will results start coming in from working on their credit we always tell our clients for to wait three to six months uh and that's not saying that you couldn't be done by that time but we always say three to six months because there's one thing that is that we cannot control we cannot control once it's in the hands of transunion equifax and experience no one can control that i don't care what anyone tells you about credit repair they cannot control what they do inside of there so our job what we do is that we're gonna challenge that those informations based on what I just told you. And then we're gonna see those results come back in. And from those results, we will do the follow-up work that's necessary. And we say, give us three to six months and it could take longer depending on what your situation is. It can take longer. But the, just like I told you at the beginning of the video, this is gonna be a process. This is gonna be some work. And you don't need to, you know, get into the mode of thinking that things are going to, bad things are going to happen to you and that, uh, you know, it's not going to work for you. That's, that's your own mind giving you that self-doubt. The next thing is for furnishers, which is something that we do where I talked about doing a full furniture validation. We usually get responses from them within two weeks. And the next step that we talk about, which we with, with our A to Z process, which, which is that two-phase settlement process. And that's right here. And that's a settlement phase. And that can be done based on your finances. What we always do is we'll have a conversation with you. If we feel that the dispute process has gotten as far as it's going to be, the furnisher or debt collector has done a full validation, then the next steps that we would go to is we would move you if your finances are in the position we're going to move you to where we're going to uh, offer you to start making settlements on those accounts and that's what's going to allow you to be able to finish your whole credit repair process so if you're interested in signing up the form is below this video thank you for your time this is stephen a williams president and founder of the credit repair shop.com